Hey everybody, this is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back my gorgeous good looking friends. This is a follow up video to yesterday's video that I did exposing Travelis. Now I know many of you come here to this channel to get away from all the nonsense that's going on in the news. So this might be a video for you to skip because I don't talk too much about Meghan and Harry. I talk about the people that they're hanging around with and what I see that's going on. So today, this video is for information purposes only. I decided to take it upon myself to learn a little bit more about the global elite and understanding how they have the world and humanity going backwards. There has been new information that I have uncovered and I would like to share. If you had the chance to watch this video, you would know that I walked away feeling that there was something that just didn't smell right with this organization and how it was set up and the financials around it. So, so far, these are the companies that are being promoted on the Travelist website as being a part of this coalition. So I went through the companies that are public to read their annual reports to see where Travelist fits in in their business. And honestly, it's not that clear on what Travelist does. However, what I gather in the case for Google, there is a framework that Travelist has created for Google to use in order to post whatever the emission calculations that you see when you're attempting to buy a flight or book a vacation. When you look at these individual partnerships, you have to ask, well, what's in it for each of them? Because obviously, Harry doesn't have that much to offer. So what is the motivating factor behind this coalition and companies being attracted to signing on? Well, obviously, it's the harvesting of the data and sharing it around. I mean, you have various types of data, flights, you have vacation spots, you have people's interests on where they like to go, boosting up tourism. I mean, yeah, technically a collaboration or get together of the best minds to give the consumer at the end of the day the best value while saving the planet, in theory, is a great idea. But let's be real. These companies have one thing first and foremost, and that is profitability. They're not going to be doing this because, yes, they really believe that they themselves are going to be able to save the earth. Overall, we know that making profit and money is the driving force to all of this. One of the things I love about this community is having the sanity check of a community with like-minded people who have values, morals, ethics, and most of all, decency. So when you look at these bigger corporations like Google, Visa, Expedia Group, you recognize that on the surface, they're saying all the right things to make the world a better place. But that's not what is really going on. If you haven't noticed, it's like every institution or corporation has a framework set up focused on environmental, social, and governance. This is the brainchild of the same wealthy elite few that do attend the WEF annual meeting. This concept has been around since 1960, but in the beginning, it started out with people who wanted to see a fair, more equal work environment, whether it be with women or minorities. But then corporate America investors hijacked it. And fast forward to the year 2004, the United Nations invited a group of financial institutions to present their report, and it was titled, Who Cares? Wins. And those that were in attendance, as you can see at the bottom here, were all the banks pushing this ESG platform or framework seen here. And in less than 20 years, this ESG movement had grown from a corporate social responsibility initiative, had been launched, by the way, by the UN, into a global phenomenon representing more than $30 trillion in assets under management. And these types of events with the UN, and as well as in Davos, started to accelerate with these conversations as they recognized that governments, investors, and consumers saw the power that corporate entities had to shape the world around them. 
And of course, certain politicians that were aligned with Sleazy E saw this opportunity as well and began to align. Hence the reason why you've seen certain former presidents and current presidents participating in the United Nations discussions, as well as the WEF in Davos. I don't know about you, but it sure does feel like the diversity, equality, inclusion, this climate focus on reducing carbon footprint and all those initiatives around that, mental health, all these social issues seem to have accelerated over the last couple of years. And you see more corporations forcing it down people's throats. And a lot of us are scratching our heads because we're seeing the world go mad. And you got to wonder why are major corporations falling in line and following these ideologies that have been so destructive to society? And it's because governments, specifically the United States of America, provides tax incentives for these major corporations, for these programs which are being backed by the same investors who have money in the market. So you see, this goes full circle. They don't care about the people. This is all about how are we going to take this exploitation of these workers, not really improve the situation, but take advantage of it monetarily. And, and this guy that you see here understands it better than anybody else. So I'm going to read something to you, and you try and guess what country I'm speaking about. They must produce positive results in the economy so that the peaceful transition to a democratic form of government may endure. Both sides have entered into their historic compromise in the firm expectation that the West will help in engineering an economic turnaround. The rise in prices can be expected to exceed 300% in the next 12 months, and if the free market rate of the dollar is any guide, Hyperinflation is just around the corner. The dire economic situation has a positive aspect. It would not need a great deal of resources to turn it around. Existing economic structures have become so dysfunctional that there would be little resistance to a complete restructuring of the economy. Moreover, both the government and solidarity are not only receptive, but positively eager for radical change. The stage is set for a radical new departure. What is needed is Western engagement, reform process, and a commitment to see it through to a successful conclusion. The problem can be delayed because the actual debt reorganization would not take place for at least three years, but it cannot be avoided forever. Now, if you were listening to that, you might think that this was the United States or maybe Ukraine or even maybe the UK. That was George Soros in 1989 talking about Poland and the collapse of communism. Listen to George Soros in 1989 talk about Poland and the excitement he has for opportunity. In addition, Joe Biden also weighs in on the opportunity that presents itself with the fall of communism in that country. The West don't appreciate how uh, uh, prepared and eager the Poles are uh, to engage in radical reform. I, I, put, uh, I went there and I discussed a very thorough uh, and, 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 and radical reorganization of the Polish economy, large-scale denationalization, and not only solidarity, but the government also endorsed this program. So uh, the willingness is there. Do you think the U.S. should back such a package, of, a package of that magnitude this weekend? I think the United States has to back a package of that magnitude, and I think the United States has to use its influence with the G, at the G7 meeting in order to be able to not miss what is his, right now an historic opportunity. You have a gentleman on the program with me here who knows more about solidarity than I'm going to ever know, but the fact, it seems to me, is that solidarity now has a stake in the outcome of the Polish economy and the outcome of the political process. You're a student of the Polish economy as well as the Hungarian. Uh, what do you say to that? It is really, as Senator Biden said, a historic opportunity uh, because there's never been a successful 
uh, economic reform uh, program carried through in a centrally planned economy. And in Poland, the political will is now there. And uh, in, a, in a strange way, the very uh, uh, bad condition of the Polish uh, economy is an opportunity. Because, uh, for instance, inflation, which in the Soviet Union and to some extent Hungary is still latent, in, in, in Poland it's already there. Uh, so uh, the, the economy is spinning out of control. Uh, the the uh, living standards very low. So actually the resources that would be needed to turn it around are actually quite modest. And there you have it, folks. Many talk about George Soros being the boogeyman in the background, but to be honest, there are a couple George Soroses in the background, like BlackRock, J.P. Morgan, Bill Gates, Klaus Schwab. They all understand that when you decimate a society, there's opportunity to build it back up. So what are we seeing now? We're seeing this whole open society for chaos and destruction. This is exactly what is going on. But to them, they see opportunity in technology. They see opportunity in a workforce. They see opportunity in power and controlling people. So I'm going to direct your attention for one quick second towards this YouTuber by the name of Daily Impress. She is a tarot reader. However, if you're not into the tarot cards and reading, she does a combination of talking about what's going on in the world in the news, as well as doing reads on the royal family and Meghan and Harry. What I really like about her is her tenacity to continue to keep speaking the truth, because I think she has been canceled now four or five times, but she keeps coming back and she brings some really great perspectives and does share as well connections to this dark and evil network of people that are causing havoc on this world. Here's a small sample of a video she did on the Aspen Institute and Harry's connection to George Soros. But first, before we begin, it's important to remember that Harry is the commissioner of misinformation at the Aspen Institute. And he's come out and said how misinformation is a global humanitarian issue. Global, of course, because he doesn't believe in the sovereignty of nations. Also, so it's, you know, the hypocrisy and evilness of him being put in charge of the Aspen Institute to tackle misinformation, which gave him a lot of power to be in touch with all the uh, the government and big tech and censoring people and deplatforming them. And also, how does he get that power? Well, one way, a major way, is that George Soros funds the Aspen Institute. And interestingly, I came across this article from last year. Uh, a shadowy organization funded, which is the Aspen Institute, funded with millions from radical leftist billionaire George Soros, is now pushing for less digital surveillance and a freer world for abortion. The Aspen Institute held a virtual roundtable to strategize how women can have secret abortions. The meeting followed soon after a Supreme Court leak. The Aspen Institute hosted speakers from a variety of powerful leftist groups, including Omidar Network and the Ford Foundation. I just want to point out, I did a video a while back talking about the Omidar Network and Archwell's partnership with them now in this Responsible Technology Youth Power Fund. Now, I've said this before, there is a concentrated focus by these global elites to focus on the youth in order to indoctrinate them into this ideology and this mindset. So behind the scenes, two organization with George Soros's Open Society Network previously funneled mass amounts of cash into Aspen Institute totaling $3 million, $3 million, $3,039,780 between 2003 and 2020. The Aspen Institute's radical pro-abortion guests revealed that George Soros' multi-million dollar investment is likely helping to pave the way for abortion advocates. So why is George Soros and Harry uh, and the Aspen Institute, why are they so, why are they getting together to talk about how to, to have abortions? Why does that matter to George Soros, who's, 
funds BLM and Antifa was killing Americans left and right and, and bring and bringing in these um, illegal immigrants over the border and they're being they're dying on the way up here. I mean, there's people being raped and murdered uh, going through Central South America. Why is he so concerned about abortion? Why does he want abortion? My theory is because he's just evil. She goes into her theory and I'll let you guys check that out. I'll put the link to her channel below. Definitely go over there, say hello, show some love. She is very entertaining, but also very, very smart. There's a reason why she's been repeatedly censored. She is talking about things that this platform doesn't want you to talk about. So now going back to these companies that are supporting travelists, how does this fit into this whole narrative of breaking down society? Well, all of these companies have these ESG governance around it and metrics that they have to fulfill in order to get these incentives or tax breaks. In addition, the executives are likely investors as well and are part of this world economic gathering in Davos. So when you look at the company Visa, they clearly outline how they incent their employees, especially the executives, to push out these ESG initiatives. They list the memberships of the network that they use in order to execute on meeting this criteria. As you can see here, they're not shy about advertising that they are aligned with the World Economic Forum, and there's travelists in the same group of friends. So the question is, how do travelists and Visa work together? Personally, I don't think there's very much going on there, aside from just having the name there, because it is listed as a non-for-profit. For the optics, I don't believe that Visa has any reason to be using their services, except for gathering the data, which is what they're harvesting and mining from the other companies that are part of this coalition. So they are trading data back and forward. That's the only benefit that I can see here. At this moment in time, I really see it as just checking the box. And I suspect that it's similar with the other companies. TripAdvisor, though, could be in trouble. So here is what I found. So as I was comparing and looking at all the companies that were partnering with Travelis, I went through the TripAdvisor annual reports and looked at their 10Ks and read through it. What caught my attention in the ESG propaganda that they put together, they talk about the other initiatives with Travelis, and it says TripAdvisor is a founding partner of Travelist. Now, I went through Travelist registration and Companies House in London, and I also went through the website to see who was a part of the company. And there is nobody listed or even a mention that there is a founder that came from TripAdvisor or externally part of TripAdvisor. Let me show you why this could be a problem. So in the TripAdvisor 2022 annual report, it says, TripAdvisor is a founding member of the Travelist Coalition, a nonprofit organization working to identify and help bring out the systemic changes needed in order for sustainable travel to be taken out of the niche and into the mainstream. So this American company on the NASDAQ stock exchange states that one, it's a founding member of this nonprofit organization, meaning a charity, 5013C, according to IRS tax code. When you scroll a couple lines down, it says in 2022, after an initial three-year pilot investment, we committed in 2022 to continue in this coalition and collaborate with other Travelist members to unify its framework for sustainability in our sector. So there's potential issues that may arise from this last sentence. So in the 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022 annual reports, there's no record of the amount of money that was invested into this travelist company. And then on the flip side, we saw that there was no record or indication that TripAdvisor had given money on the 2021 statement in the UK, as well as there was nothing mentioned in the 2022 statement. Here is the problem. 
in the 10K filing to the Security Exchange Commission, there was no mention of an investment being made to this company, Travelist. Now, it is possible that it went through to the TripAdvisor Foundation. However, we don't know because it appears that they are missing multiple years of filings. This actually is a problem now for TripAdvisor because it exposes them for not filing returns. And then two, it's a question of did they file this investment with the foundation under the guise of Travelist being a nonprofit to get the extra tax break. That would be considered tax fraud because Travelist is not a charity in the UK. It is still a private company. On the flip side, if they didn't report this investment on their 10K to their shareholders and to the SEC, then they could be in a lot of trouble for securities fraud. And that has a more serious penalty because there's jail time associated with that. So, you know, this should be raised to the Securities Exchange Commission so they could take a look into it because this doesn't look right. And if Harry is using this company and reporting it as a small company, but allowing these other big companies to put money into it and then mark it off as a nonprofit so they can get tax break, then the rest of these companies could be in trouble too. You see what I mean? Like Americans do not want you messing with their money, especially if it is invested in any one of these tech companies. I don't see Google doing that, but you never know. I mean, these are the rich elites that think that they can get away with anything they want. And I don't think Harry is that savvy to understand that the market here in the United States cannot be messed with. Anyhow, that's all I wanted to add and just show you that the real focus is about the money and how this does play into the elites and the globalists and what their agenda is. Make no mistake, this is what is happening. And unfortunately, it's greed that is fueling the deterioration of society. So let me know your thoughts. Definitely leave your thoughts below. And as always, I will be back with more content. But until then, please be safe and I will talk to you later. Bye. It was such a fraud. <laughs> Huh?